Today we're going to explore React server actions. This is something I've been really excited about uh, for React and Next.js. It helps us to implement client server communication without having to manually code an API layer in between. We can literally just make a function call and underneath the hood, React and Next.js take care of uh, automatically creating an API for us. So there are a couple of different ways to create and invoke server actions, and that's what we're going to go over today. First, I will say that the server actions documentation on the Next.js website is super awesome. Uh, they've done a really great job outlining um, how to implement server actions and the various options for doing that. So what is a server action? Well, it may be easiest to understand by example. Here in the docs, we have a simple example with a form and one button called add to cart. The form has an action that triggers a function called add item. Here within the same component, we have a function called add item. We're grabbing a card ID from the cookies if it exists, and we're awaiting a call to save to database. Now that might trigger something for you. Uh, save to database is usually something that happens on the server. Well, that's exactly right, because this execution of this function is happening on the server. This use server directive that's declared at the top of this function makes this function a server action. And so whenever this button is pressed, triggering the action of this form, Next.js and React has automatically created an API layer for us in between the client trigger of this button and form and the server execution of this function. So instead of manually building up an API layer in between, which we could do and has been available before, or manually building up something like GraphQL, where we could trigger a mutation uh, and, and wait for that, this just removes some of those middle layers and allows us to do something as simple as a function call. So let's splice this apart a bit and really get into the details of how you would implement this and some things to be aware of. First, the server action function itself. Where can we put it? Well, it can be in one of two places. It can be either inside of the component, that is a server component, or it can be defined in a separate file. So if it's inside a component, that has to be a server component. If it's in a separate file, both client and server components uh, can use this function. Server actions must have the use server directive declared at the top of them. Or if you're, if you're putting them in a separate file, then you can put use server at the very top of the file. But I would say here's the most important part to understand. The function should have serializable arguments and a serializable return value. So that means we need to be accepting very simple inputs, strings, numbers, booleans, objects, things like that. Think of it like if you could express it in JSON, then that makes it serializable. One thing that would not be possible is to pass back and forth, say, a click event of a button, because a click event is actually quite complex and it has functions on the event, and functions are not a serializable argument or return value. So to give you an example, in my last video, we bootstrapped a Next.js project with Postgres and created a very simple server action. No worries, if you didn't watch that video, no big deal, but I will link to it down below if you want to uh, grab this repo or anything and get started. Uh, we made a very simple little app here that has a generate post button that we can click and it generates three random posts. This operates via a server action. So we can see here on the left that we have a home component, which is this whole page. Uh, and it has a generate posts function inside of it with that use server directive at the top. So anytime someone comes to our page and clicks on our button called generate posts, uh, this server action gets triggered uh, and it queries out to our database on the server via Prisma to create three different posts. And then it uses this built-in Next.js uh, revalidate path function to say, revalidate the path of the homepage. And that will cause a data refetch to happen so we can see the fresh posts. 
So that's a quick overview of server action functions. Now let's look at how you would trigger those. First, let's start with how you can't trigger a server action. If I go to our code here and I switch to using just a plain all button with an on click that calls our server action function, uh, this might look simple enough to where it should work. But if I go over and click this button, we'll get an error that's not very helpful called maximum call stack size exceeded. Uh, no, that's not very helpful. Why this isn't working is this is this button's on click handler. This is something that's really happen, happening on the client. And so this would be something that needs to go into a client component. And we happen to be in a React server component right now. And on top of that, on click is something that passes click events to the receiving function. And click events are not serializable. And so one of the key tenets of server actions is that the function's arguments and return value must be serializable. So for those two reasons, uh, this method won't work. Now, a very similar method that we could refactor this to is simply wrapping this button inside of a form. So let's add a form tag here with an action attribute. And you might be used to actions uh, such as Copilot is suggesting here, uh, pointing to URLs. But in Next.js, we can now point them to server actions, functions that we can call server side. So let's say generate posts is our action. And we'll wrap this up here. And then we'll remove this on click handler. So essentially, this button becomes the submit button for this form. And this form action points to this function up here. So we'll save this and see if that works. And it does. So that's a very quick way to make this work uh, simply by wrapping the button inside of a form. The other reason why this works is that this doesn't actually technically require JavaScript to work on the client. This can happen without JavaScript even being loaded on the client, which is pretty awesome. So using form actions is the first way that we can trigger a server action. The second way we can trigger a server action is by overriding the action a button within a form should perform. Perform. So let's say that this form, we had some additional functionality in it, and its primary purpose was really to write a post. But this button specifically is designed to generate a post. So instead of performing the write post action, we want to override that which we can do on the button attribute called form action. This will overwrite the action performed instead of performing the default form action. So let's say for this one, we want to generate posts. So if I go back to our example, uh, I'll refresh just for a good measure. If I click this generate post button, it still does function uh, because it is performing the overridden form action. So those are two methods, both the form action and the buttons specific form action that we can trigger server actions. And this is all from either server components or client components, either one. Now let's say we are in a client component though. How could we use our tried and true on click handlers to trigger server actions? Let's take a look at that. Let's do some refactoring and move this button into a client component and see how we could use the onclick handler to trigger our server action. So let's do some shuffling here. Uh, I'm going to create a new component called generate posts button .tsx. And we will open that to the side here. So let me stub out a component real fast. Generate posts button. And we will copy and paste our button into this component. Then in our parent component, we're just going to reference our generate posts button. Generate posts button. Over in our button component, we'll designate that this is a client component with the use client directive at the top. And we're not going to be using this form action anymore. Instead, we want to use an on click handler, uh, just as we normally would within a button. Now I don't have access to the generate posts function here, which is inside of the parent component. 
So let's move this generate post server action into its own file. So I'm going to cut that and we will create a source. Uh, I'm going to make an actions folder and we'll make a generate posts action. So at the top, I'm going to say use server and then paste our component in here or our server action in here, I should say. We'll make all of our imports as we need to. And we'll export this function. Now we can use this function from our actions file. Now this looks simple enough, but we're going to run into the issue before of uh, an error on our page. In fact, let's save and refresh. And sure enough, we do get this error again. And again, this is because we can't pass a server action directly to an onClick handler because the onClick handler sends this click event, which is full of a bunch of information that is not serializable. So if we take a look at the docs uh, over on Next.js, we can see that they have a section here called custom invocation using start transition. So here's a client component where they have a button where they're using an onClick handler. And instead of passing a server action directly to the onClick handler, they wrap it in a function and then again wrap it in a call to start transition. Let's give that a try. We'll pull in their call to use transition here into our code and import that. Now we can change this onClick handler to do a start transition and pass to that a call, which is a function, to the generate post server action. Let's save that and give that a try. If I click the button, then sure enough, it does work, generate our posts, and refresh the data on the page. Now there's an extra little tidbit here, which is that with the use transition call, we also get this pending attribute, which allows us to know if this transition or really this call to our server action is still pending. This will be a good place to disable our button uh, while a call is being made. So let's force our server action to take a little more time than it usually would so we can see this happening. At the top of our server action here, let's uh, await a promise that will take uh, three seconds. So that will make this call take just over three seconds. Now we'll have this pending for a bit. And inside of our button, we could say that this button is disabled if the transition is currently pending. So let's save that and take a look. If I click Generate Posts, now I can see our button goes to a disabled state while that transition and server action are happening. And then it again uh, goes back to its normal state after that is finished. So that's a nice perk of using Use Transition. Uh, is that we can use onClick handlers. It is a little bit of juggling here, but it's not too, too bad. We also get this is pending attribute, which is useful for the feedback in our UI. There's one final way we can trigger a server action, so let's take a look at that in the docs. We can invoke a function without start transition, but it takes a little juggling. You might have seen this in my last video. Uh, here, they, in the example, they have a button with an onClick handler. What they really want to do is pass the increment function. But because onClick automatically passes a click event, which is not serializable, they instead wrap increment into a function that takes no arguments and returns no value. And that passes the requirement of serialization. So you can do this. It just takes a little function wrapping here. Now there's more to love about server actions, so I encourage you to take a look at the docs and check that out. Uh, there are things in here for optimistic updates using a uh, currently experimental use optimistic hook. If you're using the forms method of triggering server actions, there's also a handy hook called use form status that you can use deeper in a hierarchy to know if a current form is pending and uh, is in our example, make buttons or inputs disabled or not. So lots of cool stuff in here. Definitely go check it out. So that's a quick overview of React Server Actions in Next.js. I'm super excited about this feature because just removing that need to manually write an API layer in between the client and the server uh, really does speed up development and can help you build apps faster. 
So give it a try for yourself. Let me know what you think. And thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.